strategy leading into tomorrow morning going into this deal not knowing where we're going not knowing what it looks like is to have as many rods as i can stuffed in this nitro rod locker with line and, and a few baits tied on or some snaps so that I can snap some baits on real quick or nonetheless just make some quick reties when I get to the water and look at it. Now have you fished this area before? I, I have fished this area uh, a couple times. I've been on the Arkansas River uh, uh, once or twice. Once I think. Maybe twice. And uh, also I've been on Fort Gibson one time too. And uh, uh, not very good on didn't do a very good job at Gibson. Now, how do you think experience will play into that? Um, being in this area, whether you, you go to somewhere you've been or whether you don't go to somewhere you've been. You know, I think, uh, it, you know, oh, it's always helpful to it, go to a body of water you've been on before. And it may not help you fishing-wise, but it will help you uh, quickly understand what the what, what it's like, what the contour's like, what the bottom's like whether it's a whether it's a uh, a rocky impoundment or it's a river system, you know, uh, whether the fish live in the creeks or this particular zone of the lake's not healthy, you know that that's why having some experience and maybe being fortunate enough to fish on a particular lake, you're like, hey, you know, I don't need to waste my time over there on that stretch. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys going in, not knowing where they're going, they're going to have that go-to bait, something that they can trust. What is that for you? I would say go-to bait, and I'll probably throw it uh, in the morning this time of year for a little while as a, as a buzz bait. Okay. Why a buzz bait versus any other top water? Uh, I can cover a lot of water in a buzz bait. It's a throw and reel deal. Uh, you know, I would say a spook maybe early in the morning, uh, but... Uh, but it's, that's a slow process, and and I've got it in my head that i got to keep a bait moving in order to, to click until I get a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'd say I'll probably start out with a buzz bait, maybe a spin bait. So one of the last questions, more or less, in the structure of, of Major League Fishing is that at any given time of the day tomorrow, you're going to know what the other guys are catching. Yeah. Now, what's that going to do to you mentally? I don't know. I'll tell you, it did, it did, I did not fare well at Lake Fork at the... Uh, Texas Toyota Bass Classic the other day, or the Toyota Texas Bass Classic, uh, because I, mere, I I knew that I was going to get it handed to me. Uh, I just didn't realize how bad I was going to get it handed to me. Uh, I was fishing the bank, and the guys that were lighting it up were fishing deep, and and it 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 messed me up. I mean, I was like, I, I got mad. I, I was like, you know, I'm a better fisherman than this, and you know that. You can't let that kind of negativity creep into your mind. I'm going to try not to let it creep in my mind or worry me tonight. You know, you don't want to embarrass yourself out here. You can catch fish, but I can tell you this. I've been to a lot of lakes before and go pre-fishing the first day and not catch diddly crap. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to happen tomorrow. Uh, if it does happen to me, then, you know, then uh, then I'll walk out of here with my head hung low and, and uh, be embarrassed a little bit. But, yeah. you know, what? come the next day, I'll be ready to go fish the next one. You know, one last question is, the guys that, that come out here and fish and that have, have fished so far this week, they they know the strengths of who they're competing against. Because mm -hmm. um, you, you're a close-knit group of guys, you know what everybody's strengths are, and you probably know what they're going to be throwing. Yeah. Now, if you start hearing so-and-so is catching something, are you going to guess, well, I bet he's catching on that, maybe I need to switch to that. That could, uh, that, that, that will, I don't know if it'll play a role, but I can promise you in my mind if I hear some of the, some of the things being clicked off and the speed of them being clicked off, it will clue me in a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it will clue me in that, hey, you know, they're, they're probably biting a square lip or, or, uh, or you know, they're fired up on a, on a, uh, a flipping bite of some sort, you know. You know, I know, I know Gerald likes to flip a lot and, and I know Christy likes to square, throw a square bill a lot and I know he likes to flip a lot too. Uh, they're versatile fishermen. I know Brandon, uh, Brandon he likes to throw a, a swim bait. Um, you know, I know that's a little bit slower process, so I don't know much about uh, the, uh, the fashion that Brent uh, fishes in, and uh, who else we got? And Jacob. Jacob's a, Jacob's a good junk fisherman, you know. You, you never know what Jacob could be. Uh, he could be throwing a frog or, and then two casts later drop shot and then 40 foot of water. Who knows what that cat, yeah. you know. So some of them I think I can read a little bit better, and you know, I promise you this, if they hear my scoreboard going off, 
they're going to say, what the hell? Fish are jumping in Watson's boat. They're just jumping in his boat. It's like magic. It's like, where's Watson at? Because they don't, they don't expect me to catch any bass, so they're going to be like, man. He's out there with the same net. That's right. He's, he's just freaking running this. He's got a net. That's what he's got. He's got a net. He's got dynamite. I have not heard any explosions. And uh, they're, they're going to they're, they're gonna think something weird's going on here.